Hey everyone, welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Khalid Maidan. In today's video, we're going to be taking you through the SCARF test. And the purpose of this test is to look for dysfunction of the ACJ, the acromioclavicular joint. Now, during the video, we're only going to be testing our patient's right arm. We're not going to be testing the left arm because we don't want to slow your video down. However, in practice, we always want to make sure that you compare the two. So let's go through the test. Now this test is going to be done completely passively, so the examiner or therapist is going to do everything. We're going to start by bringing our patient's arm up to a 90 degree flexed position, and we're also going to make sure that the elbow is at 90 degrees of flexion too. Now our other hand is going to be resting on the scapula, and we're going to show you why that is later in the video. And how we do the test is get our patient to relax, and then we're going to simply bring our patient's arm into increasing horizontal adduction. Now what we're doing with our um, hand on the scapula is making sure that the scapula stays in relatively the same place. We want to limit movement there. For example, we don't want the scapula to be elevated too much. And we'll go through why that is in a second. So thank you very much for that. A positive result in this test is pain localized to the ACJ. And when your patient uh, reports their pain, if it is ACJ dysfunction, they're not going to say, oh, it's kind of here, it's kind of there. They're going to be very specific and say it's right there, right on the tip between uh, the acromion and the clavicle. Um, now, other things to bear in mind is if they report pain in other places. So when they say, oh, that movement's painful, don't just stop the test there. Determine if the pain is precisely on the ACJ. So for example, if they say that they have pain here, it might be that they're getting pain at their sternoclavicular joint because that joint will be compressed with that horizontal adduction movement. Another thing to consider is the range of movement. So for example, if you bring your patient's arm across and it's not going that far, it might not be because of an ACJ dysfunction, it could be because they have a tight posterior capsule and doing that adduction movement is being limited by how far the capsule can stretch. So bear that in mind too. Now we mentioned a second ago about our stabilizing hand, the hand that's sitting on the scapula. And the reason for it being there, as we said a second ago, is so that it stops the scapula moving into too much range of motion in other directions. So for example, to stop the scapula coming too far into a lateral rotated or a elevated position. Now if we Forget about what that hand does, so let's just do the test without a hand. You can see that the patient's arm goes a lot further when the scapula is elevated, so you can see the relevance of making sure that the scapula stays in the same place. 